the original uh, image in Photoshop. So there's the original image right there. Open that up in Photoshop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go to Noise, Dust and Scratches. There's a lot of different ways to do this, but this is how I'm doing it. I'm going to set this to like 8 maybe. There we go. That's too much. Let's go 6. See, it separates the shapes a little bit better. Let's, what about a 5? Yeah, 5 is probably the best. So there we go. That gives us some nice solid fields of color. We've still got some moray patterns in the upper right here that um, we're going to have to work on later. But um, I'm going to save as, and I'm going to save it as test. And I'm going to save it as a PNG because PNGs are lossless. Save. Uh, large file size is fine. I don't care. There we go. So now we're done with Photoshop. We have a file here that is converted to, for the most part, solid colors. So we can open this up in Illustrator, which is the correct program to do this work in because we are creating large fields of solid color and it should not be pixel based, it should be vector based. I know you can do vectors in Photoshop, but vectors are most easily used and most effectively used within Illustrator. So let's go ahead and do it that way. I'm going to select this. I'm going to go to Object, Image Trace, Make. And it starts out with just black and white. Because if we go up to our preset here, we can see it's default, which is essentially black and white. And no grays in between, which is not what we want. So we'll go ahead and select like six colors and see what that looks like. We're a lot closer. It even captures the little squigglies in the edges of the lines, which is, you know, accurate. We can pull up the uh, image trace palette right here using this button and uh, we can change this. So right now we're at six colors. Let's go to five. I'm not concerned with the colors right now. I'm more concerned with the shapes. We can change the color to whatever we want later on as long as we get the shape right. We can uh, go to the advanced palette here and reduce the number of paths used and start playing around with all these settings. Corners, well, there should be no corners. And as far as noise is concerned, I'm going to turn noise way down. What, see, what noise is doing is it's getting rid of all that moray pattern. So we're, we're getting pretty close to our final product here. There we go. So if I could bring the colors down to four, you can see the different uh, settings that I've used here. Snap curves to lines, ignore white. Well, I'm not going to do that because there is no white. Usually that's for a, a logo that has like a white background or something. It'll knock it out, but we don't need that this time around. So if I zoom in on this, we're getting nice smooth lines for the most part. It's not perfect, but it's really close. We've got some noise down here and we could play with that. We can get rid of that manually when we're done. And so I'm going to close this. I'm going to select my direct selection tool here, select the whole thing, and I'm going to expand. And what that does is it takes a shape that it's kind of like a smart object in Photoshop. It's holding a lot of different functions and histories, and it expands them into raw data. So I can do that, and now we've got the actual vectors that we can play with. So now I can choose the uh, direct selection tool. The What's it called? Yeah, direct selection. The other one is called the, just the selection tool. And I can start deleting the crap I don't need. Like, I don't even want this green here. And I'll show you why in a minute. And then I'm going to select this top. Oh, I'm going to ungroup. Oh, object. Sorry. Ungroup. I usually use keyboard shortcuts. Ungroup, ungroup. Just ungrouped a bunch there. Now every shape is is uh, its own shape instead of being grouped together. Before it was grouped together, and if I selected it, it would move everything. So it's all ungrouped. So now I can select all these, and I can group them. And see how they move together? They're all grouped. So I'm going to... I didn't mean to do that, so I'm going to ungroup. I'm going to select these, and I'm going to lock them. Oh, whoops, no wonder it didn't work. Lock, selection. Hey, there we go. See, now I can't select them or anything, which means the only thing I can select is these, which is great, because now I can select the first one, and I can go object, I'm sorry, select, same, fill color. Boop. 
See, it selects those fill colors. I'm going to lock those. I did it again. I'm not using that submenu. Selection, there we go. So now the only thing I'm selecting is all that crud that we want to get rid of, and I delete it. Now we've got our logo. I'm going to unlock all, and now we have all our, our shapes back. Drag my layer down to the plus sign here, and it duplicates it. And now I'm going to take this bottom layer here. I'm going to hide the top layer. I'm going to hide the bottom, or I'm going to show the bottom layer. I'm going to select this, and I'm going to object path offset path. And it gives me this dialog box right here. We can close. Oh, I can't close that right now. And it's offsetting our path. And so uh, what it does is it adds to the outline of your path. It expands it. So I'm going to change that to like 20 and see what it looks like. If I go back to my original piece of art, we're looking at something that sticks out about that far. So I'm going to back to Illustrator. I'm going to go to uh, 35 maybe. That's kind of close. We've got a problem down here where it's it's taking a hard edge and making it a point. And so I want to round it. There we go. Okay. And uh, lastly, I'll make it a particular color. So I'm going to double click my foreground color here, my fill color, and I'm going to select that because I think that's kind of close to what it should have been. Um, <clears throat> I'm kind of spitballing all this, so just bear with me. But uh, I'll select all of this. I'll select everything, and I'm going to go to my Pathfinder here. And what this does is it joins paths or separates paths using Booleans. So it can, it can take a bite out of something using another shape, for instance. I'm going to use it to join them all together. I'm going to go to Object and expand it again just so that I know that it's all in good shape. I'm going to take that color again. I seem to have gotten rid of that color. I'm just guessing here. And uh, that's totally wrong. <laughs> and um, now that's my back layer. So when I put my front layer on top of it, this is what I get. Now let's compare that to the original. So now I can drag this over here and I can start selecting shapes. Let's hide that background layer and bring up that foreground layer. This one's probably going to be white, I'm guessing. So let's make that white. Oh, it's grouped still, so object ungroup. And that way I can select individual shapes. And I can even use the eyedropper tool to do that. Let's get a nice bright version of that color. I'm in RGB. And then these guys down here. I can use the eyedropper tool, eyedropper tool to select those. I'm getting pretty close to the right colors, but it's not identical. Um, and most of that is because I'm just not trying that hard. I'm trying to get this out quick. I'm going to go ahead and delete the original art. And now I've got this wonderful piece of vector art that is pure and perfect. It's exactly what it needs to be. I can take this into Photoshop and rasterize it in any size. I can even copy the um, vectors here, edit, copy, and I can go back to Photoshop and I can create a new document and I can paste those vectors in. Paste as a path. There we go. Now my vectors are in Photoshop, so if I go to my paths over here, they're going to show up. I can save that path. Sorry, you can't see that. Save that path. Now I've got a now I've got an official path here, and I can use this to make Photoshop layers if I wanted to. But really, what I would want to do in Photoshop, I'm going to close that without saving, is take my Illustrator document here, save as, save it to my desktop as logo. Dot AI. Boy, all my palettes are off the screen. Okay, and now I've got this document here. I can open this in Photoshop, and I can make it any size I want. Oh, here we are, grayscale. RGB color. Hey, look at that. Now it's perfect. See? And uh, now I've got a perfect representation. I've got the perfect knockout. It's nice and transparent behind. I can zoom in, and it's, it's really beautiful. There are be even better ways to do this with layers and the different vectors and the different shapes. And I could get into that, but I'm not going to right now. So now I can save this as a PNG. 
uh, with transparency and bring that into a video editor or put it on the web, rescale it, um, make a new version from the source vector at any scale, and uh, it will always look perfect. And not only that, but this can be used in, oops, darn it. Not only that, but this can be used in print. Whereas um, the pixelated image, this is way too low res to use in print. Way, way, way too low res. Uh, I would have to rasterize it at a very high resolution and then use that in print. But I've got the vector right here, so I don't need to do that. Photoshop is a great tool for pixel manipulation. But when you're dealing with solid shapes, Illustrator is always the better option. It just is. It's always the better option. And there are almost no exceptions to that rule. Have a great day.